Yeah. The ones that hate me the most look just like me. Hey guys, less sexy Jack Harlow here, and it's time for another installment of worst rappers in the game. I'm currently recording this one on what I think is the hottest day in recent memory in the UK, and one thing you've got to know is that we're not prepared for that. I don't have AC in this apartment. You're genuinely gonna see me getting sweatier throughout this video. Since when do I record videos in a t-shirt? Am I truly a hater of Jack Harlow, like the intro would suggest, or was that just a fun little meme that I put in there to start it off? I guess you'll find out in approximately 10 to 20 minutes. In today's episode, as I've referred to a couple of times already, I'm gonna be covering Jackman Harlow, better known by his slightly abbreviated rap name, Jack Harlow. To get an opinion on his music for this video, I listened to Loose, Confetti, That's What They All Say, and Come Home, The Kids Miss You, the most acclaimed album of 2022 so far. So after hearing all this, in my opinion, is Jack Harlow one of the worst rappers in the game or not? This is CDTV Productions, and let's find out. So what did they say? Let me know your thoughts, got a handy and a chicken, I'll never go across, no. So let's start with this project, when Jack was 20 years old and beardless. Loose was a decent little project that I actually enjoy a fair bit up until about track 9. Before that point, it was kind of interesting to hear Jack making this music that's relatively different to the stuff that he's putting out now. Two For One has a lot of production credits on this mixtape, and he has a very subdued but kind of upbeat sound to his beats. They sound pretty subtle while still having a sense of fun to them. I think him and Jack work pretty well together. I'm off a tab with a synthetic sundown 45 minutes till the shit set it Check it for the kid, I had a chin check him I might want too much I was out the liquor when I called you up right? Jack also sounds like he's just fucking about a bit and having a good time on this project. The last song, Too Much, isn't necessarily a good song by any means, but you can tell that he's not taking it seriously at all and he's just going in the booth and having fun with it, and I enjoy it in that way to a degree. There's nothing too serious about Loose in general, which, in my opinion, works really well for how Jack Harlow's personality seems. Ugh. Funnily enough, when it starts to take a dip for me is right about the time that Two For One stops having production credits. When it hits Can't Call It, the album's momentum just drops right off. It's one of the mixtape's more boring moments where Jack just sort of drones along with the instrumental and nothing really all that catchy results out of it. Can't call it, I don't know what to say about this night we've been having, she throwing that ass. I think the main issue with Loose is that it's longer than it needs to be because most of these tracks sound alright if you just listen to them on their own. The sound just gets a bit dull after 7 or 8 tracks of it. You can definitely hear the Drake inspiration creeping its way into his music early on as well, especially with the song None Free. Yeah they know I got a gift, yeah they say that I've been blessed, if you feel some way about me go ahead say it with your chest. It's not a project I could see myself coming back to a crazy amount, but I'm definitely going to be getting at least a few replays out of Sundown, Pick Your Phone Up, Slide For Me, Cody Banks, and Like This. Especially Slide For Me. To me, that's the catchiest one on there. Don't gotta ask, I know they die for me. I'd put Loose in the category of would probably enjoy it the most if I was stoned out of my mind, but it's a fairly decent lesson when I'm sober. Yeah, we all gonna die. I was worried to be honest, but it's all going right. When I first laid eyes, I was awful and tight. And I might be off something, but I'm all in now. I'm gonna say it straight away. This is the best full project that I've heard from Jack Harlow. Better rapping, better pacing, better beats, and better vocals. It's a big improvement from Loose. And I think one of the main reasons for that is that on a lot of the tracks on here, the pace steps up quite a bit. Loose was almost chilled to its detriment as it went on, but the second you start with Ghost on this mixtape, just instant energy with a breakneck tempo and smooth ass flows from Jack. This works way better for him in my opinion because the faster speed that he's rapping at stops his voice from getting too monotonous. Is the sweat showing up too much yet? Ghost, Rotten and Through the Night are great showcases of this, but some of the slower tracks on here also work better too with the improvement in Jack's melodies and his hooks. While 
working on this video, sometimes I would just wake up in the morning with the hooks or the instrumental melodies from songs like Ice, Sunday Night, and Warsaw just playing in my head. Like I said, Loose felt like music that I could only fully enjoy if I was severely blazed. But Confetti has music that I can fully enjoy when I'm sober. Rain is a great song that's super chill, sort of like the loose sound, but the beat evolves nicely when it gets into the hook, and it's one of the ones with more personal content from Jack, which, from what I've heard from his music, is a pretty rare thing. And River Road is a great introspective closer to the album that, once again, has deeper bars than I've heard from Jack on most of his other music. Those two are more personal, but in general, the lyrics don't seem to take themselves too seriously on confetti and like I said that works for Jack in my opinion. My nuts hang like ornaments. 6 9 would approve of Mr. Harlow. Pokemon Kush, yeah, this shit looked like an Oddish. The coochie like cotton is not one I'm fully following though. Are you saying that it's really soft, but it's dry as fuck? Pussy hit me like a hurricane and I came quick, but the shit was not embarrassing. That's that real music, music. coming Come back, back home. home. All in all, Confetti is a pretty fun listen while containing some of Jack's best deep tracks. Two more albums and then an everything else segment to go, I've got this. Make a bad bitch sign paperwork. Once the ink dries, can't say a word. Unfortunately, this is the start of Jack Harlow's a little too serious that it sounds kind of unnatural era. It's far from its worst on this project, believe me, but this just doesn't keep up with Confetti or even Loose. This was his first full album after blowing up and it does open up fairly nicely with Rendezvous, which I mainly like because the hit boy production on it reminds me of something that I'd hear like Benny the Butcher or Conway the Machine over, but the lyrics are solid enough with Jack reflecting on his newfound popularity. Then after that we go into Face of My City which is extremely bland lyrically, but the flows and the low key drums on it help it become a mild banger, a, a tepid thumper. If she came to stay with me, ain't no way she ain't pretty. Got the eight away hitting. Y'all some internet thugs won't come face to face with me. It's when we get to 21C slash Delta that this album becomes completely uninteresting to me. On the third track. The fourth track sonically comes across as a continuation of track three, which in itself was already a two part track. And at that point, I started to really feel like the sense of humor that was conveyed in Jack's earlier music was gone. This just takes itself a bit too seriously and as a result, it's a pretty bland album. When I was taking notes for every track on this album for this video, the most common descriptive words that I used were decent and boring. That, that's pretty much the range of this album right there. The strongest point of Jack's music on That's What They All Say is his flow. That's one of the only real redeeming qualities on here for me. Way Out is very catchy with how he raps over it. It of course has What's Poppin' and its remix, where his words just roll so smoothly over those pianos. And Route 66 has a good verse from him. Jack never had the most depth to him as an artist in the first place, but here it's like his personality got taken away and he got turned into a commercial specialized, watered down rapper. Even when his flows are good, he sometimes just sounds straight up disinterested on these tracks. Already Best Friends starts off with some not so great sing rapping from Jack, and then ends with them rapping his verse like he could not care less about it. I recommend you don't listen to your friends, shit ain't been the same since they stepped in, 25 deep in the same section, and I feel like I knew it from the past, I mean at this point we're like lesbians. Then they had another lab. Baxter Avenue was the deep track from this album, like River Road was from Confetti, but that also suffers from a super underwhelming delivery that just holds it back from being good. Most of the beats aren't even all that exciting or interesting. We did get a Jetson made producer tag in the form of a choir on this album, so that was probably the highlight. That's what they all say is just a very uneventful album, and the worst one in this video yet from Jack Harlow. But. It's not the worst one in this video overall. Let, let's just let's just get into it. Girl, you poison, 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 poison. For the good kind. It's crazy how you're on my mind. Oh boy. This is an album that I'd heard quite a few things about before listening to it myself. 
and very few of those things were positive. It's ironically prophetic how Jack says on Dua Lipa from this album, I checked the web, they out here chewing me up, because this album went on to be his most universally panned. I thought to myself, it's probably not that bad, people are just overreacting as they tend to do on social media, but this is one of the worst albums I've heard this year so far. I don't understand how every track on this album has between 4 to 13 producers, and most of them turned out sounding like dining room background music. Music to set the table to. It definitely shows that bigger doesn't necessarily equal better because Confetti, in my opinion, had way better beats than this project with one to three producers per track. Even if I found the beats on Loose to be a bit dull for a full project of them, even those were more of a vibe than the bland production on here. Why does I Got A Shot have 13 producers? I got a shot, it's not a pistol. Number one spot, I'm too official. Name ringing bells like school dismissal. Another amazing twist of irony on this album is that by the third track, you're literally hearing crickets. Of course, it's not just the beats that I have an issue with here though. Jack's rapping throughout this whole album was void of anything interesting. It is more bland lyrically than that's what they all say. And that's what sucks, because Jack seems like a pretty likeable and funny person in real life, but you would not be able to tell that by listening to this album because that just doesn't translate into the music at all on here. It should be funny when he says stuff like, I'm trying to get you cream filled on some donut shit, but with the too serious image this album portrays of him, it's just an eye roll moment. A lot of the lines in general just sound really forced with how they're wrapped. I've got to compare the songwriting to Confetti as well. How did we go from a hook as clean with the rhymes as y'all ain't get to see what I foresaw coming to the team overseas out in Warsaw stunting, talk tough to me catch a north paw from it? You see, that just feels nice to say. To I already got a song for my main chick, so let me do a record for my side piece. Let me do a record for my side piece. Let me do a record for my side piece, A. Eh? I know those are just two specific songs I'm comparing here, quite reductively, if I'm being honest, but I'm telling you right now, like as a serious point, that Warsaw hook is a hundred times catchier than a single one on here. While we're talking about hooks, by the way, I love how the first class hook just makes it sound like Jack doesn't know what to do with the letters O-R-O-U-S. I've been a, go up the, sex in a, really letting the sample do the heavy lifting there. I actually tweeted about that when I first heard the song, got a minor banger with it, and in the replies to that tweet, me, along with another Twitter user, at prolific user, came up with this together. The first part of the hook goes the same way as usual, but then you go, make her say, know who we, fly you round the whole US, you know, whole US. That fits the flow, like you don't have to cram in syllables to make that work, and then you go from saying fly you around the whole US to the next line which is, and I could put you in first class. That hook works thematically better than the one on this song. The way it sounds now, it's just such an awkward gap when he leaves it hanging. First Class isn't the worst song that I've ever heard, but I think how much it relies on the sample is just a great example of how undercooked this album is. Take a look at Talk of the Town as well if you want to see another example of extremely lukewarm sample use. Like a Blade of Grass is a good example of how more of this album could sound if a bit more effort was put into how the vocals sound, but most of the tracks on here aren't like that. Bet you in the dark trying to put that light on you. Could buy you anything, let me spend some time on you. And even then, Like a Blade of Grass isn't the most interesting song in the world, it's just one of the better ones on here. Basically, take everything that I said for That's What They All Say, apply it to this album, and then just imagine it with this sort of attempt at classy sounding production all throughout it. That's what Come Home The Kids Miss You sounds like. And in my opinion, 
it's really not good. So she hit that gas, so rockin' the puff puff pass, not a whole squad getting fucked up pass. I guess the first thing I'll talk about in this everything else section is Jack's Sweet Action EP, which is the first thing that he released after he dropped What's Poppin' and his popularity just skyrocketed. To me personally, this EP is better than the two albums that followed it. It's not amazing, but it's a solid collection of simple bangers with hit potential. In particular, outside of What's Poppin', Too Stylish, Smells Like Incense, and Hey Big Head are all songs that go pretty damn hard and have really great flows and deliveries from Jack. We might run that train instead. Me and my friend, just like twins, same nut sack and the same dick head. Seen that bitch and we ain't impressed. This is his last project that was entertaining and energetic to me up until now. And you could still hear his original sound in there before he turned more into this, like, Drake-like quotable rapper. I also decided to check out one of his biggest early songs, Dark Knight, because why not? And man, he was kind of going in on that one. Riding through the city with the windows down. Heard that you was talking about him right there. Boy, I swear to God, you better switch pronouns. I don't ride waves, I don't switch no sound. Old Jack Harlow music definitely has something going on that I like here and there. New Jack Harlow music isn't quite hitting like that. As for his features, I don't have too much to say about them. They're fine, and they work a bit better with him being more of a monotone, cool cucumber type now, and, and less jokey, because it doesn't last for a whole album on a feature. But I wouldn't necessarily say that he steals the show with his verses. I like his verse on Crown and his hook on Green Bubble though, a couple of his older ones there. So overall, nothing too crazy covered in this section, but I would say that Sweet Action and Dark Knight are worth a listen. I got a Dallas and a H-Town boo, got a Betty on Cape Town too, ooh, 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 ooh. whole gang in steakhouse food. My ranking for the Jack Harlow projects that I listened to for this video was pretty easy to do. Come Home The Kids Miss You is the worst one that I heard, that's what they all say after that then Loose, and then Confetti is the best project that I've heard from Jack Harlow. I didn't find any of his projects to be particularly amazing, but Confetti is the one that has the most replayable songs to me, and just sounds the most natural for Jack Harlow. So now it's time to give my own personal rating for Jack Harlow to see how he stacks up against everyone else that I've covered in this series so far. I think you already know it's not going to be super high, I'm going with a 5 out of 10 for Jack Harlow here. Because his loose and confetti are nice enough, but on the other hand, he also has two worst album of the year contenders for their respective years for me. To me, he's mostly a very middle of the road rapper that used to make music that works a bit better for him, but not so much on his last two projects. And that places him at the number 18 spot on my list, below Trippy Red and above Gunna One of the Drip Stunna. As always, I'll still be checking out Jack's next album, and if it is better, then I'll be more than happy to bump him up on the list. But what do you guys think about Jack Harlow? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'm especially interested to hear about longtime Jack Harlow fans, people that have been listening since Loose or before then, and what you think of his evolution over the years because for me personally i heard all of these projects just a few weeks ago when i started working on this video for the first time click here to watch me rank in future's discography from worst to best and thank you for watching shout out to my kings and queens and everything in betweens on patreon for supporting me and a special shout out to my biggest supporters on there and those are a gear big daddy foe griffin up church i am regent and ryan shadow 507